from facing staggering fines that could go up to a million dollars to losing their place on the European tour, this is the real reason why Live Golf could face an exodus. But let's start with the insane fines, because these could literally change the golfing landscape forever. Now, if you remember, the DP World Tour suspended and fined its members last year, who joined the Breakaway League without getting an official release. After all, the law does state that you can't go and compete for a rival tour without permission. But even though this move was successful, over on the American side with the PGA Tour suspensions, the European Tour couldn't implement its bans initially. Why? Well, because a bunch of live golf players filed a petition and got a stay order from the court, which allowed them to compete in DP World Tour events for the time being. But now, the arbitration panel has sided with the Tour, which means that live members have to pay some very hefty fines. In fact, some players like Lee Westwood and Ian Poulter, who joined the Upstart League right at the start, have already been fined over $600,000. Not to mention, they've been indefinitely suspended from competing in DP World Tour events as well. Oh, and this is on top of the original $125,000 fines and suspensions that they had to fulfill earlier. Here's the kicker, though. The Sport Resolutions Arbitration Panel has given free reign to the DP World Tour, meaning they can impose as many fines as they want want. And that, folks, can only mean one thing. Fines for everyone! Now, there were 17 golfers on the initial list, and most of them were live members from the league's first season. But remember, Greg Normans brought a bunch more players to the roster for their season two, which means that the DP World Tour's blacklist has also now gone up to 26 golfers. And now, they're prepping to impose some very harsh sanctions on these players. In a statement that was published after the panel's decision, the DP World Tour said that it had already sent notices to 26 players that they were being sanctioned. Oh, and get this, every single one of them is getting a different punishment depending on the number of live events they played and their impact on the tour's broadcast partners, sponsors, and stakeholders. So high-profile players are screwed. What's more, the tour also laid out the way it's dishing out these punishments. For instance, you could be fined anywhere between $15,000 and $125,000. Also, yes, these are per event and can go up to eight events along with a suspension, meaning those with eight high-profile breaches will have to pay a million dollars in fines. In fact, even though the current notices have been sent for breaches that happened between the 22nd of June 2022 and the 2nd of April 2023, these could potentially stretch out beyond that timeline and continue into this season as well. I mean, that's way too much money even for live golf players. And now, they've only got one option, to resign from the DP World Tour, yep, a lot of Saudi League members have already started handing out their resignation letters to the European Tour. After all, no one wants to pay those insane fines and still remain banned, right? Not to mention the DP World Tour is essentially making them choose between Live and the Tour with these sanctions. And we all know they're never going to abandon the Breakaway League, at least not soon anyway. So who's resigned until now? Well, Lee Westwood, Ian Poulter, Sergio Garcia, and Richard Bland have all left the DP World World Tour. What's more, since these four have already opened the floodgates for what's being called a mass exodus, more live golfers are also apparently thinking of taking the leap and resigning from the tour. This newer contingent includes golfers like the former Masters champ Charles Schwartzy and his fellow South African Brandon Grace. Oh, and there's a lot of controversy surrounding Paul Casey and Martin Kamer, which could lead to their resignation as well. Why? Well, you see, Kamer is one of the most high-profile German players on the tour tour and was supposed to appear in the upcoming Porsche Europe Open. Plus, Casey was supposed to play a big role in the competition because he's an ambassador for Porsche. So now with both of these out of the tournament, the DP World Tour is facing backlash from the fans and the sponsors. And finally, there's Henrik Stenson, who was already on the verge of leaving after he was kicked from the European Ryder Cup team. But it looks like leaving isn't exactly going to be a simple affair either. After all, a resignation doesn't mean that they don't have to pay the fines. In fact, we've already got a case where the DP World Tour is threatening a player to pay his fines. Yes, I'm talking about Sergio Garcia, one of the people that have left the tour, who didn't pay his initial 125k fine last year. In fact, out of the 17 people who were sanctioned, he's the only one who didn't pay that. But even though he's no longer associated with the DP 
world tour, they've said that they still intend to collect the fine from him by taking appropriate action if he continues to not respect the panel's decision. So it could very well be the same thing for everyone else who's trying to escape too. With that said, it's not all doom and gloom for Live Golf members. You know why? Well, you see, a lot of high-profile European golfers like, say, Westwood or Poulter have clauses in their Live contracts that allow the league to pay their fines. As a matter of fact, some recent reports have even suggested that the upstart circuit has already sent a million bucks to the tour, covering the fines for seven of their golfers. And to be fair, it makes perfect sense. After all, everyone knew that these guys would face sanctions the minute they go and compete at another event without getting an official release. I mean, at least that's what everyone thought anyway. But Lee Westwood says that the tour didn't communicate the extent of sanctions, and he's really mad about it. Speaking with The Independent, he said that people love to assume that he knew what was going to happen if he joined Live Golf. However, according to him, no one was told the extent of the punishments they'd be facing because the language from the tour was vague at best. What's more, Westwood also talked about how there's no obvious difference between playing on the PGA Tour and Live Golf. After all, both are technically DP World Tour's rivals, right? Well, except for the fact that the Breakaway League is funded by the Saudis, the 50-year-old thinks that it's dishonest to disregard Live purely on that basis because not only did the European Tour encourage its players to play in Saudi Arabia back in the day, but they've got a bunch of sponsors from the country as well. So he concluded that this is all happening for one sole reason. The PGA Tour is trying to maintain its monopoly. The Englishman went as far as to say that the DP World Tour is actually in bed with the PGA. For him, the European Tour has turned into a feeder tour for the PGA now because every single great player that emerges in the EU usually ends up joining the PGA Tour. Oh, and there's a good reason for that. After all, the strategic partnership between the tours does mean that the PGA can grant free entry to the top 10 players in Europe, and that's one of the biggest reasons why the golfer decided to resign from the European Tour, because he simply doesn't want to be a part of a regime like that. So now, with all these departures and extra controversy, the question is, what What's next for Live Golf members? Well, for starters, them cutting ties like this means that they won't be allowed back in very easily. Like, those who are yet to resign can still pay off their fines, serve an eight event ban, and start playing on the DP World Tour with all of its benefits, like world ranking points. People like Sergio Garcia, however, won't be allowed back instantly, even if they pay their fines. Not to mention, once they do manage to rejoin, they're still going to have to fulfill their suspensions, which is brutal. Although, let's be fair, most Saudi League players only cared about a couple of things, the world ranking points and the Ryder Cup teams. So even though a lot of players who've played a big part in previous Ryder Cups will be sad, the league is in a healthy enough place now to not affect their futures. In fact, now that they're out of this constant legal back and forth, they can just focus on their golf. As for Live Golf as an entity, well, they'd already lost favor with both the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour. So their players taking a stand and resigning only gives them an upper hand. After all, not only will these golfers be fully dedicated to the Saudi League now, but it also gives the circuit that extra bit of legitimacy, since it's got players who are not competing in any other competition. And there you have it from losing their place on the European tour to facing staggering fines that could go up to a million dollars. That was the real reason why Live Golf could face an exodus.